Um, why did you choose to study in Humber College? Oh, well. <laughs> of all what? schools, like how did you even find Humber College to begin with? Okay, so Humber College helped to like, they help students to um, find like companies, good companies. They have like, well, it, the co-op program, the, so they yeah. help you find companies they help to you work find with. companies to work with. And from there, you can get retained, you develop your... Hey guys, you're welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new on this channel, thank you so much for joining. Please consider subscribing down below and be sure to turn the post notification bell on so you can get notifications each time I post a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for joining again. You know the vibes. Give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and don't forget to share with your friends. In today's video, I have one of my beautiful guests here. Her name is Ms. Toya. She's my friend. She's going to be talking about her experience schooling in Canada, how she got in here the course she's doing the cost and the entire process she's going to give us a breakdown so this is it you guys are about to learn something new I'll be having a new series on my channel talking about study permits and schooling in Canada I hope you guys learn from it if you have questions don't forget to leave them down below and if you have video suggestions as well don't forget to leave them down below I'll make sure I consider working on them so first things first girl introduce yourself <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Miss Tora. I'm a student of Umba College, Canada, Toronto. I'm studying human resource management. Hmm. Human resources are shaking over the back. <laughs> okay, so uh, she's a newcomer in Canada. She's studying human resources. How did you choose to study human resources? Like, why didn't you choose accounting or something else? Okay, so my bachelor's degree i studied industrial relations and personnel management more like labor relations right so and afterwards i worked with the company in, in the hr department and then i decided to do my second so instead of personnel management in nigeria oh wow you have that yeah i have that cool. i mean i'm an hr practitioner okay. so and after doing that i realized that hr is the way like i fell in love with hr I, so i developed interest in human resource and then I chose as a career path. That's why I'm studying human resource. That makes sense. Mm. So, um, why did you choose to study in Humber College? Oh, well. Hmm. Of what? all schools, like, how did you even find Humber College to begin with? So, I made my research. I checked every, I checked different schools and their um, ratings, the courses. One thing I learned while I was doing that is that whenever you want to, when, when you want to like, apply for a school, you look at the course, like, you, have to, you look at the course and look at what people say, about the comments on the, so you look at the comments under the course. Yeah, you look at the comments under yeah under the course and like okay, is this course is this course it recommended, recommended in, in the school and every other thing. So that's why I did. I checked it. I checked. I saw that Umba College, Uma Resource in Umba College is actually very good and like people are, people said a bit of things about them and like positive, positive things. things about about them and after after school most of their students tend to like get jobs. They like they um so after the program you do like in an internship placement so. Umba College up to like the up students to um, find like companies, good companies. They have like a, well, the co-op program, the, so they yeah. help you find companies. They help to you work find with. companies to work with, and from there you can get retained. You develop your your um, skill skill and relationship with the organization. So I chose Umba College because HR is good in Umba College. That's why I chose Umba College. Okay, that's nice. That sounds good. So like, um, how did you apply for your admission to Umba College? Like. What and what did you use? How much did it cost for you to apply for admission? Okay, so I to apply for my admission in Umba College, I, I I used my YEC results. That's your O level. I used my degree certificate. That's my university. your university certificate and also your transcript, your university transcript. So I also used my um, international passport, like the dial, the bio data, the page. page. Yeah, I used that as well. So and also I used like my recommendation, like you have to get a recommendation letter from both academic and professional. So both from your school, academic. That's like from a lecturer in your school, maybe your supervisor, your supervisor, your project supervisor, or whoever you were, you can you were close to in school, and also your work. Your work. I don't, if you're not, first start from your office. If you're not working, that's fine. You don't really need that. But if you're working, you need the first from your from your office as well. And uh, and that was that was all. So I used like I used my international passport data page, O level. That's your YEC results, your degree certificate, your transcript, your reference letter from both your um, employer, employer and academic. 
Okay, so really did you have to like take the English test? Because I know some schools require for you to write IELTS. Did you have to take IELTS? No, I didn't do IELTS. I have not. I didn't take IELTS. So, so Umba so, College don't require that. Maybe for only Nigerian students. So I guess Umba College does not have um, the IELTS as a requirement for students coming from Nigeria. Or um, you can also check if you are from an English speaking country or you were taught in English. If you don't want to provide the IELTS results or you don't want to take the test, you can provide English as a medium of instruction letter and the school will probably waive that requirement for you. Yeah, and because English is our lingual franca in Nigeria, so they also consider that that's why. And I, I we also did no F, did English in school. Mm -hmm. Your from your primary school, secondary school, you need English, English, English. And English so is even our official our official language. So that's one of the reasons why you don't need the But obviously, if you want some to, schools some require, schools require yeah. for it. Especially when you want to do your master's degree, I think you would need that. Okay, cool. Um, like, how long did it take from when you applied for um, human resources to Humber College to when you gained the admission? Okay, so it took roughly um, roughly a month and two weeks. Yeah, if I remember clearly, that's what it took roughly a month and two weeks. So I had applied for it first week in May 2019, and I got the admission second week in June 2019. Oh, that's nice. That was pretty fast. Yeah, it was pretty fast for me. I don't know. People were like, I'm lucky, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes luck to shine on your way. Yeah. Um, so before we get to how you apply for your study permit, I just want to quickly confirm how long is your program for and what's like the calendar like? My program is for 8 months, so I started in January and I would finish August. The first semester was January, from January to April and the second semester I started in May, May to August. Oh, so pretty much 8 month program, right? Yeah, like 8 months, yeah. Eight so months. when do you have your co-op? So, well, realistically, I'm supposed to be doing my co-op right now. So this, so but because I'm in school and I won't be able to like merge the two together, I'll do it in September. But I'm supposed to do my co-op before the end of the year. That's November. So this the school calendar is is from January to November because I, my graduation is in November, right? So you have like from January to November to do your co-op. Whenever you want to do your co-op, it's fine by you. If you want to do it as a part time, as a full time, it's fine. It's, that's it's up to you. Up to you but so, so Umbar College allows you to choose how you want to do your program. Just yeah. like, like yeah. your co-op. Just make sure that you do it. Okay. Just make sure you do it before November. Because if you do, if you don't do it by November, you have to carry it over till next year. You know that's winter section because by then, this that session is over. Is over. Yeah. So you can't do it. And you, you have, have to pay school fees. And you have to pay extra. So it's best for you. Better for you to do it like that year. But they will help you in finding a placement, right? Well, they will try their best. They would like link you up with like different employers different companies so it depends on your skill what you what you have to offer then can you tell us like which document what and what how did you go about the application for your study permit okay um, yeah yeah so my st study permit comes with the visa and i said so i got my i got my admission in june i said the, the old process in july i so the first thing first the first thing you need to get is your acceptance letter that's like the most important thing from, the, from school. the school yeah the final acceptance letter you need to upload that it's very important you need your statement of account six months running for both your personal statement of your of account and your sponsors, sponsors. but if you, you need that as well you also need your pay slip from your organization so like if you're working if you're your working employer. yeah from your employer you need mm -hmm. you need your pay slip you need the letter of introduction from both your employer and your sponsor mm -hmm. as well. You also need um, your birth certificates. You need your police. You need the police report. You need to do a police report. It's very important. And then you also need to complete it. So you will download the visa form online. I need to complete. You need to fill it and complete the visa form. Mm -hmm. And also you, you 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 have to pay a certain amount of money for biometrics and the application fee. Okay. Do you remember how much you paid for biometrics and the application? The biometric was 85 Canadian dollar. The application fee was 150 Canadian dollar. Okay, so roughly about two seven. So, yes, we are about two seven something Canadian dollar. Exactly. Okay, cool. How much did you spend for the admission? Like, how much was the application fee for your admission? For Umbar, when I was applying yeah, from Umbar, from Umbar was 100 Canadian dollar. 100 dollars. Did you did you have to pay your tuition fee uh, before you submit your admission? Because you didn't mention anything about. Um, like uploading tuition fee receipt or anything when you were applying for your visa. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I so what I did was because I paid like parts. So the the old tuition fee is about sixteen k Canadian dollar. So I paid about eight k for applying. So the receipt. So I paid about eight k and I used um the receipt to apply for my visa. So you know, it's not compulsory to actually pay, but 
it's like, it's like it helps yeah it, it improves the it improves your situation your, yeah, it improves your chances, improves your chances. Do you get? so it's it's is com- is not really compulsible so okay, and yeah. also i forgot to mention your statement of purpose is very very important so like you need to structure your student of purpose in a way that it will make them like you need to make them feel like feel like feel that they, like, they, like, you genuinely, you genuinely want, want to like come and study and leave the country do you get what i mean so like you tell me like, let us let them know that okay you're coming here to study and like to g- gain knowledge to go and like b- to build your own own, your own country to like, like you, you get what I mean. So you need to actually structure your statement of purpose in a very, very good way. So what are some things that you think that you have to include in your statement of purpose? Why you want to study in Canada? Your reason for studying in Canada? Why you chose Canada? Why you chose the school? And why you also chose the course? Like why you want to the experience, the knowledge you want to actually acquire from that course? And also you need to convince them that once you are done with the course, you would. Like go back to your own country. Like let them let them, let them see reasons why they should they should give you the study permit because there are so many applicants, there are so yeah, many people that millions want to, of so applicants. Millions of applicants. So you need to like convince them that okay, once I'm done with my school, I'll the knowledge I acquire, I will use it to like help my the develop country. my country, the economy. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you need to like just I'll put more do, effort I'll, in it. I'll try to do a video a more detailed video on writing your statement of purpose and some important things that you need to put in there so that we don't make this video unnecessarily long like in total how much did you spend on the entire process um from the application fee to the very end how much in total do you mean including my um my tuition fee so um you said your tuition fee is about sixteen thousand Canadian yeah. dollars. so aside from the tuition fee how much in total did you spend okay so for the application aside my tuition fee like i said before i paid hundred dollars for this so for the admission for the school admission i also pay them about about 150 canadian dollars for the study permit, study permit application. application i paid 85 card for the biometrics then i also did some other few things like medicals that i paid about 35,000 naira i also did police reports was like 5,000 naira so that's about i'll put the amount here and the school fees was as well sixteen thousand, which she had to pay eight thousand before coming which is not mandatory anyway um overall how would you say the experience has been for you schooling in canada especially compared to your experience schooling in nigeria it's nothing compared you can't compare it's uncomparable i'm not like i'm not <laughs> trying to say nigerians are not trying or you know, like the lecturers are not the school the schooling is not good obviously my background knowledge is from nigeria what i know most of what I've learned is from Nigeria. Do you get what right. I mean? But studying in Canada has exposed me to like different things. Like it feels like I'm actually working. It feels like I'm in a workplace. It feels like I'm doing. I, I don't mean because I. It, feel, it feels like a real experience. Like a real experience. Aside from like learning. Exactly. In class. So it's not like it's not all about go and read your book and pass your exam. No, you like literally have to put it into practice, a lot of practical work. Yeah, it might be very overwhelming at times because a lot of work and assignments, assignments, project, project, project. <laughs> a lot, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. But trust me, I've learned so much. I've learned a lot and I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to come and study in Canada. It's actually a very good experience. I'm sure you would love it. So like, how long in total did it take for the process? The whole process, like to get my, like everything together. Yeah, when you get, got to get your study permit. So I have, Okay, I I said my I said the process like the um putting of my document together in July, but I applied for the study permit in August and I got it in November. So that's about three months. Yeah, that's about three that's about three months. So that's pretty much it. That's your experience studying in Canada so far. Yeah. Hopefully you get to like it here. But before we leave, would you like to stay in Canada after your studies? Let's just let's just skip that. <laughs> I don't know if Mr. Officer don't want to hear this one. If you're Mr. Officer, don't watch this, okay? <laughs> Definitely, I would love to stay because, I mean, it's nothing compared to where I'm coming from. <laughs> Obviously. It's nothing compared to because the economy is good, it's the, it's, it's the peace of mind, um, I can do whatever I want to do. Like, it's just a good feeling. Like, I don't think I want to go back to Nigeria. <laughs> 
I mean, obviously we all know that yeah anyway that's pretty much it about our experience hopefully we get to bring other people to share their experiences on this channel but in the meantime don't forget to subscribe to this channel down below subscribe <laughs> and if you enjoy watching this video please give it a thumbs up if you have questions for mr please don't forget to leave them in the comment section she'll be there answering your questions you can also follow her on social media on our instagram at tobu misty tobu underscore misty so go check her out guys so that will be all for this video guys we'll see you in the next video in the meantime stay, stay confident bye bye, bye.